All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we have some pretty wild news, which honestly, man, I'm gonna slap myself in the face because it shouldn't be that wild to me, that Jerron Boots Ennis, according to Steven Espinosa of Showtime, is not the mandatory challenger to Errol Spence Jr. So everyone crying duck can tuck it and relax. <laughs> Let's talk about that and why Steven Espinoza is right in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. We are in the 147 pound division where once again we run into the rules of the sanctioning bodies in boxing. And it's some pretty bad news to fans of Jerron Boots Ennis who are looking for him once he became the number one contender in the IBF to be named the mandatory challenger, or excuse me, thought that he was the mandatory challenger for Errol Spence Jr.'s IBF title. Uh, now, before I get into that, though, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when we release more videos. Also, uh, if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter or a new subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much. Like my guy, Patrick Bell, thank you so much for your continued support in the super chats and in the cash apps and also in the, the super thanks where you can thank where you can uh, support the channel in videos like this little heart and dollar sign down the lower right hand side, because you guys really are the ones that make the channel go keep the channel clicking. It really, really is important The guys uh, all the support you guys give by hitting that like button, all of those things really does matter. All right, so let's get into this. And first and foremost, um, I should have known it. Should have known it, should have known it, should have known it. I am guilty of listening to the boxing media and paying attention to the way that they phrase things. And when I should have known better to sit down and read the rules of the IBF. Um, when people talk about who the mandatory challenger is for the champion. In this particular instance, let me tell you what I'm talking about. You have Jerron Ennis, who is the number one rated uh, contender in the IBF. He is also in the top uh, four or top three of every other maker sanctioned in body. And people have been referring to him as the, cha the mandatory challenger for Errol Spence Jr. Now, Steven Espinosa was on Twitter yesterday and he corrected some people in the comment section and said that uh, uh, Jerron Ennis is not the mandatory challenger for Errol Spence Jr. And he said there's a lot of people that do not know the difference between a mandatory challenger and a number one contender. They are not the same thing. Now, I know that to be true because I have said it a million times when it comes to the WBC, specifically people talking about Dillian White being the mandatory challenger for, for Deontay Wilder for six billion days. And also uh, Devin Haney being the mandatory challenger for Vasily Lomachenko when Vasily Lomachenko had the WBC belt. Now, I know that they were not the mandatory because I had read the WBC rules specifically around the instance with um, the, ins the situation that was going on with Deontay Wilder, because clearly Dillian White was not the mandatory challenger because there had already been a mandatory challenger announced who was goes by the name of Dominic Brazil. So we knew I knew that Dillian White was not the mandatory. So in an argument that I was having with people, I went and I read the rules uh, and it was very, very clear with the WBC. It says just strict just by being designated number one, the number one contender does not mean by virtue of that, that you are the mandatory challenger that the basically that the WBC 
has to appoint you or name you as the mandatory challenger. Doesn't matter if you're number one. So there was a difference between, in the WBC very clearly, a difference between the number one challenger and the uh, and the mandatory. With the IBF, however, did not read that rule and did not read the rules. But more importantly, when I actually went and read the rule after I, after Steven Espinoza said what he said, I because Steven Espinoza, I know, is probably right. And the reason why I say that is because Steven Espinoza is an attorney, number one. Number two, that's what he does for a living. And he basically airs championship fights. I have just a sneaking suspicion that he knows what he's talking about in that regard, especially since what he said was definitely true, that there is a difference between the being the number one contender and the mandatory. However, when it came to the IBF, because it was referred to as that much and uh, in the media, I just assumed that that was the case. And then when I looked into the rules, it appeared at first glance that that was the case because their language is a little bit more confusing. And I actually had to go through and read the rules several times to get around to the interpretation that Steven Espinoza had. And then after a little while, it didn't take too long, maybe it took 20 minutes, I got it. This is what the problem was and why people believe that, that Jerron Ennis was the was the uh, is the mandatory, but why, and I'll explain why he is not. Because it says in the rules, and I'm going to paraphrase, I'm not going to pull all that up and do all that, I'm just going to paraphrase. And, so, and there is a rule that says that the number one, that first of all, the uh, the champion shall fight the designated, the top designated contender, I probably should pull out, um, that particular word. Anyways, the number one contender, right? Or the uh, preeminent uh, contender, whatever the phrase that he used for that, that is, but let's just say the number one contender, right? That they are going to keep the number one and the number two spots vacant until two people in the top five fight one another in order to be so for somebody to become the number one contender or the number one available contender, right? So when Jerron Ennis fought Custio Clayton, he became the number one contender. Previous to that fight taking place, the number one was vacant and the number two was vacant. Jerron Ennis was number, I do believe Jerron Ennis was number three. Virgil Ortiz was number four and Custio Clayton was number five. So the dub IBF ordered two of the top five, which were Jerron Ennis and Cusio Clayton to fight for that, uh, to, uh, to become the number one contender. And Jerron Ennis won that. So you would think that that would mean that because the rule says that, that, <laughs> that, uh, the number one that the mandatory the champion shall defend against the number one available opponent that that means that he is the mandatory but no he is not <laughs> because there's another clause in there that says notification because I read it a couple of times I was like hold on man there is something in one of these clauses that is going to throw this off so I thought to myself okay hold on the first was written in from the perspective of what the responsibility is of the champion, that he has to have a voluntary, a mandatory defense, and it will be against the number one available guy. But when you actually look at the rule where they talk about notifying the parties of the fight, they actually change the word, the, the, the label from number one contender to mandatory challenger. The only time in that rule that I saw that the IBF refers to a mandatory challenger is when they have, when they say that the, that the uh, IBF will notify the champion and the mandatory champion and the mandatory challenger to negotiate a deal within 60 days or for a fight within 60 days of the order. And if they do not have or 90 days of the order, and if they do not have 
an agreement within 30 days, they go to purse bid. So right there in the notification section is where you get the where you get the answer to when somebody becomes the mandatory challenger. And it is the exact same rule as the WBC has, except for it's a lot more convoluted way that they phrased it. They are saying you become the mandatory when we notify you of the fight taking place. Once when you are the number one contender that you will be the person once we notify you of that. Now, also, if you look, it doesn't say it explicitly that I can see. Also, that would allow you to understand why they can have multiple title eliminators, because it is at their discretion as to when they are going to notify the the, the uh, champion of the of his mandatory obligation and notify the mandatory challenger that he, they must enter into negotiations with the champion. So all in all, Jerron Ennis is not the mandatory for Errol Spence Jr. Similarly, there is no mandatory right now for Tyson Fury and heavyweight, even though Deontay Wilder is the number one ranked contender. So that is the answer to the question. And so anybody that wants to say Errol Spence Jr. is ducking Jerron Ennis or ducking his mandatory, he does not have one. Which will, which leads me to my last point, that Jerron Ennis would probably be better trying to go the WBO route and get that mandatory shot ordered for him with the uh with Terrence Bud Crawford. But anyway, that's just what I want to see. Anyway, bad not necessarily bad news, but just clarification. Errol Spence Jr. did not duck his mandatory because Jerron Ennis is not the mandatory until they actually notify Jerron Ennis that he is the mandatory and at the same time notice it, notify Errol Spence and tell them both that they have 60 or 90 days to fight in 30 days to come up with an agreement or it's going to go to purse bid. And that's the answer to the question. Anyway, so that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.